and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he is that the greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you have made him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Isaiah said, Those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down. You're looking at the Vatican in St. Peter's Square. St. Peter's Square is in the shape of a keyhole. The Vatican itself is in the shape of an upside down cross. This is truly the devil's church that has misappropriated and hidden the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Even the name St. Peter's Basilica gives away the identity of Satan's church. Basilica, the origination of the word, means a place of a king. The word basilisk refers to a serpent described as a dragon that can kill by its breath or look. Basilica translates into the abode of the basilisk, which is the abode of the serpent, the royal serpent, the serpent that wears a crown. Revelation 12 And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. As you view the entirety of the Vatican itself, the upside-down cross, at the head of the cross 
the head of the serpent becomes visible. The conspicuously placed circles for the eyes of the serpent, as well as the square window for the exit of the tongue on the mouth of the serpent becomes obvious. It is truly the abode of the serpent. The dome on the top of the Vatican becomes the crown of the serpent, truly hidden in plain sight. The entirety of the Vatican is an upside down cross with a serpent at the head of the cross wearing a crown. This is truly the church of Satan and the keys to the kingdom of heaven have been hidden by Satan himself in the form of one of the largest Christian churches in the entire world boasting of over 1.2 billion members, deceived by Satan himself. Woe unto you Pharisees and teachers of the law, for you have taken away the key to knowledge. You don't go in yourselves, and you've kept those who are trying to enter from entering. Your damnation shall be the worse. Not only in the Catholic Church, but all forms of apostate Christianity have hidden the key to the kingdom of heaven. An old serpent called the devil and Satan, the accuser of the brethren, took on the form of what's called a nakash in Genesis 3. This is his first encounter with humanity, and this is when he deceives Adam and Eve. The Hebrew word is the Strong's Concordance uh, 5175, nakash in Genesis 3.1. And it's not just a creepy crawly snake, it is a shining serpent. It's an upright fallen angel. It's Satan in this form that he was beautiful to look upon and he tempted Eve. It was more than Eve eating a piece of fruit, but the point of this Nakash reference is that he, the serpent, manifests all over the world in all these various cultures. In disparate time periods, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Egyptians, the Sumerians, Phoenicians, in Asia and Japan and China, and there's this obsession with this dragon, this winged serpent, and this isn't just the rudimentary imaginations of man coming up with some mythological creature. This is These are carvings of what they saw, and it's pretty evident to see that. It's hard to explain this as just coincidence that all these cultures came up with this same creature without there being some type of common denominator being Satan. Just like it says in Revelation we just listened to, that he deceives the whole the whole world. He's deceived the whole world. And Michael's gonna cast him out. Michael is gonna fight with the angels and, and they're gonna fight Satan and his fallen angels, which is one third of the angels, and they're gonna get cast down to the earth. And Satan's gonna then set up his new old order government, but he has to have the groundwork here. He has to have a throne built for him so that when he gets here because he knows he has a short time he's gonna have to sprint right out of the gate and so we're trying to expose to you that his groundwork has been laid the channels of communication and the channels of worship and these avenues and funnels of blind loyalty fealty devotion trust the world right now is facing something deeper than human corruption or greed or malice or lust for power. Uh, it, it's a lot darker than that. And there are plenty of humans and things that look human on this earth that have chosen their king. And they've chosen Lucifer. They think that he's got a chance to win. They backed him at the original uh, fall of the angels. They thought he could you know, set his throne above the Most High, and they are gonna fight to the death. They're dug in, and there are humans that have accepted their role, and they think that they're gonna be rewarded. Um, if anyone saw Transformers 3, you'll see this, uh, this concept. Remember a talk I had with my dad once about tough choices. And now's not the time. We'll set something up, though. Of course, that was way back when my dad's firm was in charge of budget review and accounting for NASA. You see, the thing that he taught me was, when it's not your war, you join the side that's going to win. You really think you're the first man ever asked to join the noble alien cause? Who are you? 
You know why we've not been back to the moon since 1972? Because these two, they came to my dad and they told him to do some creative accounting. They get way too expensive to ever go back. So he and others shut down the American and Russian space programs and they've been our clients ever since. You up to kill people? You think they give you a choice? Besides, it's not like I personally participate. I am a liaison. I liaise. It's hostile takeover time, Sam. Become insect operative. Your work is done. Your Excellency. You chose sides? You chose wrong. That, that's it. They think that he's going to get to rule forever, but it's going to be for 1260 days, uh, what's known as the Great Tribulation in the Bible. This is all prophesied in the Bible. So if you're not a believer and you see that there is this nefarious, unhuman-like evil that is manipulating world events. <laughs> Creating false flag terror events, uh, starting with these doctrines of man and these religions that all are going to be prepared and they're all going to culminate whenever he does arrive. He's going to appear benevolent, but he is going to be that old serpent, Satan. And just like when he tempted Jesus in the desert in Luke, he, was, he took him to all the kingdoms of the earth and he said, look, these all belong to me for the glory of them has been bestowed to me from God. God has allowed Satan to set up these governments and kingdoms and royal bloodlines. and It's all part of the plan. He's going to let Satan flex all of his muscles and he's still going to win. So we're here not to pick on any one particular religion, but to show you that they are all tracing back to you that old serpent Satan. The devil, the deceiver, he has created all of these false religions, these man-made, satanically inspired man-made religions as evidenced here. John of Potmos, who saw the visions um, that Jesus gave him and he wrote the book of Revelation in 70 AD, when he was shown the mark of the beast and the number, it was in a foreign language to him at the time and he just wrote down what he saw. And what he wrote was the Greek number 666 here as he wrote it. And as you can see, it is a <laughs> it is an eerie match for the phrase in the name of Allah. And there is even, uh, it even looks like a serpent to me. I mean, here it is. And, and the Arabic language was not officially recorded as being a written down language until 512 AD. So John saw this and wrote it in 70 AD, and then 500 years later, we have the phrase, in the name of Allah. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The enemy has laid a snare for us, and they crucify us upside down. <laughs>